Ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. Uh, this paper is conceptual and is looking at situating TVET in another space, and perhaps we can take some lessons from this. Uh, it's not yet, it's not a published paper, so of course I can invite one or two colleagues to say, look, you know, that sounds good, let's try and put it in some kind of form that is sustainable. Uh, when you're retired, you tend not to pay attention to these things going forward. But anyway, the whole business of TVET and sustainable development is something that we cannot you know, not pay attention to. We have to look at how can we deliver TVET in a sustainable way. And um, this paper came out of that thought. So here we go. But uh, we want to look at um, the economic health of a nation and what TVET has to do with that. And I coined this from 1998, so it's coming from a long time, but nobody pays attention to it. Why there's a need for consensus? Why do we need to look at it? Um, what are the questions for this consensus? Um, we need to take a closer look at TVET to see what we need to do. And we, of course, need to focus on research. And I have an area that speaks with the, the way forward. OK, the background of this is UNESCO defined TVET in 20, 2001. Um, I won't go through the definition now, but basically they're saying it's really preparation for work. And um, you'll find out later on that TVET really covers a broad spectrum. Uh, we also have some foundation principles for TVET. Uh, my CXC colleague spoke about six principles, but I have 14. As a matter of fact, I can expand that to 15. Um, I'll probably touch on that a little later, quickly. Um, the constantly changing society and of course, the COVID-19 and what it's happening to us as it relates to that, and declining of industrial and manufacturing activities and the lowering of GDP. Uh, so we have quite a lot of things happening. Um, TVET also equip individuals with means to satisfy the, what the society needs. People think that TVET is selfishly just to skill people. No, it's really to su um, supply what society needs. So we have to look at that carefully to see what, how we're treating with this. TVET influences the quality of the workforce. We know this a long time ago. Um, we sometimes forget it, but this is a fact. It influences the workforce. And of course, economic development mirrors investment in TVET. So the countries that have movement economically in a positive way, it's kind of congruent with the movements in terms of their economic growth. If they spend time looking at their economy, it will, uh, TVET, it will, their economy will grow. TVET was provided to provide opportunities for just about everybody. Uh, students who have a tendency to be scientific based, look at science, hands on sort of thing. But we don't want to put it in the context of saying TVET is just for that, because that's where we went a couple of years in the Caribbean, where TVET was relegated to just um, for the persons who can't really do the academic aspect of it and say it is really persons with hands. Now, 80% of all work are vocational related. That's 80%. This is not my word. This is coming from data. 80% of all work that you can think of, and probably more now, because we have all these new emerging technologies that have impacted the areas of um, work, and you'll find that this is really dated. It might very well be 85 by now. So we have to be very careful here. This is an interesting background comment. The 2019 Global Competitive Report ranks Jamaica 36 out of 141 countries for the quality of his vocational training, and 93rd for digital skills within the country's activity, labor market, and so on. Um, this shows that TVET needs to play a greater role in terms of how we move forward in this new digital age. So we have to look at how we reposition TVET to function in this space. As I mentioned before, I have 14, and I expanded it to 15, established TVET Foundation principles. I'm going to run through them quickly, um, because it would be remiss of me not to mention them here. They're on another slide. And number one, TVET must be embraced by a philosophy. 
We always think that Tibet people are not philosophers, but we need to look at how we embrace a philosophy. It must be approached with vision. So in fact, but both philosophy and vision co combines. That's why I get 15, I separated them. It is a national concern and must be budgeted accordingly. Hart, uh, you're listening, trust? It is a national concern and you need to budget accordingly, not just for Hart's activity, but for TVET's activity. Provided for the common defense, we had um, the JDF here and you hear them talking about TVET and what they're doing. Uh, be supported by sound basic education, be provided with, within the curriculum offered by schools at all levels, be responsible for the total school. That means anywhere you go in that school, you should hear TVET um, resonating. Be the primary element in the preparation of youth, adults, through public school system. Provide continuing education, uh, Mr. Wong, you're hearing, um, your system, the private school system and so on should have it. Provide continuing education for youth and adults. And my next slide deals with, okay, I slipped a little bit too far. Planned and conducted in close collaboration with business and industry. Provide skills, knowledge, attitudes valuable in the mar labor market. Be the right of everyone who desires it and can be profited by it. Uh, TVET is for making business, you know, it's a profitable thing. Be continuous process from early childhood through life, throughout life. And we need to, another foundation principle is developing programs that will unlock career ladders. So we are now looking at what's happening in the future and we need to unlock those. And the last one I have here is to cater to the development of appropriate attitudes and values. So those are the principles that we have, I have here for um, TVET, and these have been documented in a lot of authors' um, texts. I have expanded them and added some of my own to it, um, but probably it's something to be considered in the way forward. Another background here, TVET remains the primary means of creating wealth, facilitating industrialization, and economic development of a nation. I didn't say that. I will say that. So therefore, we need to look at that. Some of the current realities that we're facing. Number one I have here is the impact of COVID, but there are several others. I'm just gonna run through this quickly. Um, decline in the rate of economic growth and development, high cost of living, increased inflation, decrease in GDP, uh, decrease in per capita, change in social dynamics. Um, this slide is showing you what is happening as it relates to some of the um, economic movement for Jamaica. Um, we have 2019, 2022, and we project to 2025. So we have our GDP at 15.4 um, in 2019, and it went down to 14.8 in 2022. We have our GDP growth of 1.3 in 2019, and it went to minus one in 2022. Our per capita, how much each of us earn? Uh, $5,654 in 1999. Sorry, 2019, sorry. And um, it went down to 5,407 in 2022. It's projected that it will go up to, say, uh, 6,000 or thereabout in 2023, 25. Uh, we have some other things here like fiscal balance, public debt, um, inflation. That is an important one. Um, the inflation rate, rate jumped from 4.6 in 2019 to 5.3 in 2022. So we have some stark realities here to work with. And we have to look at how we can um, navigate around those. The current realities continue. Um, change in workplace dynamics. And I don't have to tell you those. If I start telling you about all the IT interaction and so on, it will take me you know, some time, but I won't go to those. Change in skill set dynamics. What is happening, what people have to know to do, and so on. The shift in job sector expectations. Uh, TVET for poverty alle alleviation. That is the re reality now. We use TVET for poverty alleviation. Now, my theory and way forward is TVET is for wealth creation. So we need to change that narrative. So we gotta fix that. Increased reliance on ICT, increase in crime and violence, and non-sustainable, other non-sustainable practices. So we have a whole host of things happening here that we have to look at. If we take a look at what's happening in the economy, the proportion of GDP by sector, um, this 
my friend draw the attention of Isaiah Mr. Webster that this is incorrect, but it's really correct. Um, where we have 58.2% services, he, he asserted that it should be 70. But I, I know where the other 12% came from because I have those um, listed as other. <laughs> uh, the industry sector is 20%, and of course, our agriculture is 8.4%. Now, what you're seeing here is TVET. So if we were to look forward at TVET providing for our economy or for providing us going forward, we have to take a very careful look at TVET. And hard trust, it's not about hard trust business. This is about Jamaica business. We have to look at all the various sectors and how we can interact in those. And I say hard trust because hard trust is our responsible agent for TVET here in Jamaica. I said this in 1998. The economic health and wealth of a nation is inextricably linked with the quality of its TVET systems and the quality of its workforce. So there's a symbol, there's a link between these two um, facets. And um, this is the case now. I don't think many people were listening in 1998 because we have other things attending to. But it is becoming more important that we take a look at um, how we move ahead in a healthy uh, way and, of course, um, wealthy way as well. Now, this is supposed to be a conversation. Um, we're not going to achieve that because of the time and what have you. But I have here that we have a number of things that we need to have in this um, conversation. I have a number of questions here for the conversation. And what are they? The first one, what are the key factors that contribute to the decline in the economic and social systems? And I think this goes across the Caribbean. It's not just for us here in Jamaica. What are the new imperatives? Is the national TVET system aligned with the realities in our domain? And um, there are lots of questions around it. When we start to talk about some of those highfalutin technologies that we can't use now, that might be for future proofing, as CXC said, but we, we'll get to that later on. Is TVET for poverty alleviation or wealth creation? That's a question we need to ask. What changes or adjustments should we made to our teacher instruction preparation to make them more efficient? What measures can be taken by TVET to mitigate against the challenges that the country now face? What steps should be taken to engage industry commerce or commerce in TVET? Um, they are still on the periphery from my view. Um, if you look at this room, I don't think we have many industrial people here. A TVET conference like this, half of the room should be industry players. They are not here, so we need to fix that. What can we do to future-proof um, TVET? Um, looking at going forward, how can we make this a reality going forward without making a lot of missteps? On what should we um, dedicate TVET funds? And what should we spend it on? Um, the conversation for this is a little broad. Uh, we can't take it in terms of an organization decide how the funds spend. It's a broader context. So probably there's a bigger picture where the government need to say our TVET fund should be spent on A, leadership, two, um, de developing basic skills, three, skills sets and so on, and you know, industry involvement and creating um, industries or new industries coming out of education. So there are lots of them that you probably need to be looked at. There are some other questions that we need to ask. This, I call the set B questions. <laughs> questions among whom should the consensus be sought? Who should be making, getting consensus about? We still don't know that, you know, we all think that UWI shouldn't be among this um, discussion because they are in academic, you know, uh, I can give you all the history of that and how um, we, are, we have navigated against those. On what matters should we have a consensus? What processes should we employ to arrive at a consensus? How should the con consensus be documented? How should this be communicated? And the last one here, how should the consensus be implemented? Now, these are hard questions, and we're not going to try to answer them here, but we need to bear them in mind as we as a community need to go forward. We have to look at how we're going to deal with this consensus. But what do we know about TVET and its impact on economic health of a nation? Very little. The only time we start thinking about TVET in reality is when we see the current situation where we have to import labor. Uh, we can't put, build a good road. Uh, we don't have a good water pipe system. We have problems if we don't call some consultancy from somewhere, the water pipe go clearer. 
Um, the electric system go haywire if we don't. And this is where we start our problems. So we need to look at what do we know about TVET and how can we use it more effectively. So we need to take a closer look at our TVET system and try to put measures in place to ensure that this is effective. Now, there are a number of things that we need to do. And I'm just listing these here as just my view. Um, number one is to solid, solidify. This is one set, solidify the base of TVET. So we need to take a look at the TVET in our domain and what it produces and so on. So we need to take a new look at it. We have to go back to the drawing board and start to have some discussion and to see what we're going to do. Establish a workable shared philosophy for TVET. Not everybody's going to have the same philosophy, but we need to have some kind of common understanding and um, come with up some shared philosophy so we don't run into miscarriages. You know, we start doing a project and then we abort it. Um, you know, I've seen so many things happening politically that we need to be on the same page. So whenever some good things are happening, they shouldn't be aborted. We should continue to develop them more and put more resources in them. Agree on some of the principles to guide TVET. I listed 14, but we probably need to agree on those. Expand the research agenda for TVET. We need to provide funding to support the development of leadership for TVET. And this is not, I can say that without any hesitation, it's not currently being done. We are looking mainly at skills development or how we can get the numbers going, the numbers game. And we have to get out of that numbers game and start to look at how we provide leadership so that when I step from this stage, there will be others to um, take it forward and do whatever needs to be done. We need to apply UNESCO's Green TVET agenda. That if we don't do that, we're going to be non-aligned as it relates to greening in TVET. So that needs to be done. Now, the next set I have here is to apply creativity and resourcefulness. We need to uncover creative ways to de deliver TVET. Pa pandemic here has taught us a lot of things. And I heard my um, uh, NC, uh, National Council's executive uh, say that um, TVET is a good thing. I mean, the pandemic was a good thing because it taught us a lot of things and a lot of lessons we learned from that should take us forward in a good way. We need to develop new strategies, partnerships, and so on. We need to expand networks. We need to align training with production of goods and services because um, if we spend too much time doing training in areas where the training cannot be absorbed, we are really providing people for other domain. So we need to look at how we align those. Identify and implement creative, sustainable funding mechanisms for TVET. Jamaica has one area of the um, Heart Trust Act, and that provides funding. But I think there's some misnomer as to where that funding should go and how it should be spent. Um, you know, I'm retired, so I can't say anything now. The funding, in my view, should be spent on TVET and developing the education system in that regard. So we probably can have a bigger discussion on that. Um, the next set of questions here is that we need to expand reach and engage. Um, provide new opportunities for education and training system, looking from TVET from the kindergarten level through to the uh, tertiary level. Promote and implement TVET and a well-trained workforce. We need to promote it. We need to show exemplars, what's happening, and so on. Promote di diversification. We need to do more of that. Uh, we see some ladies driving buses and so on out there, but we need more of that. We need to have some of the men going into the culinary trade, more of that. So we need to have that diversification. Broaden the scope of TVET at primary. I said that already. And implement TVET with appropriate facilities at all levels. Um, this is where we fail quite a bit because we say it's too expensive. We can't put it there. So let's put the people under the tree instead. Under the tree concept won't work. The last one I have here, as I said, is assure quality. We need to realign our national TVET system and mechanisms to the realities of our domain. That's number one, quality. It's the utility of the TVET that makes the quality of it. Now, we, we need to redesign program geared at preparing TVET teachers, trainers, using current realities. We are still preparing people using the two decades ago realities. So we need to fix that. We need to quality assure TVET system to meet international standards. Um, when our friends come from USA or Canada or um, South Africa, wherever they come from, and they see a TVET system, it should be aligned. There should be no mismatch. And I have a controversial one here. Keep IR4 and IR5 in our minds, but not be constrained by their requirements. And why I say that is because if we keep IR4 as the priority, we are going to be running into problems. 
because our infrastructure in our domain is not retrofitted to deal with some of those realities. I'm not saying you must abandon them, but don't think you're gonna drive a driverless car in Jamaica and be happy, because that um, computer might not want, might, might figure that it's not gonna navigate around some of these drivers and so on. But anyway, let's leave that for another discussion. Apply measures to future-proof TVET. And it came out in CXC's presentation as well, and I'm happy that they had that as a concern that we need to look at 10 years, 15 years down the line. How do we prepare our TVET system or put it in place so that is, am I on time? I pass. One minute, okay, I have one minute. At least I'm watching the time. Focus on research. And I think I'll just do this quickly. Engage students at the graduate level and so much. We need to, but this is what I want to say here really. We need to commission mission critical research activities, meaning that UTEC, UWI, NCU, all these um, academic or institutions that we call university where research is based, we need to commission research. I'm saying here, Hartshaw shouldn't be doing the research. I mean, they have other things to do. But they should commission research in these institutions to carry out certain things and give them certain criteria, certain things to be done, and give them the fund to do it. That's what TBET fund is for. Let them apply the necessary mechanism to put these in place. Um, promote research um, as an area of concern. Um, recommend, some recommended areas I have here is alignment of philosophy, alignment of application of technological innovation and so on, best practices in TVET, um, identification of manpower skills and gaps, they say PIOG or whatever, those organizations do it. But guess what, when they do it, I'm saying it publicly here, you can't even see what they did because you have to buy the report. And nobody wants to buy the report. So therefore, we need to do some alignment there. Identification of mechanisms to strengthen TVET to the needs and skills services required by the economy. So we need to look at what are the economic pillars, what needs to be done, and how we strategize to move forward. TVET system innovation in program delivery, that needs to be done. Formal and informal setting for TVET delivery is another area that we have challenges, and I know that as a challenge because I've been meaning some informal setting, and it's nowhere compared with the formal setting. There should be some alignment there. Uh, the, Boundaries, innovations for greening TVET curriculum across institutions uh, needs to be done. Um, policy, we need to look at that and how we can fix the policy. We do have a policy, but Jamaica policy, in my view, I won't say anymore. Identification of appropriate mentoring models, we need to mentor more people, get people involved, identify opportunities for capacity enhancement through fellowships, academic mobility, short training programs, um, in my days, I got a, I know, probably we're coming from a better place. I got a fellowship to go to Canada to study. And I spent two years there doing my studies. And this was coming out of the CEDA and the Jamaica arrangement. We need to have some more of those. Um, we need to send more people to get um, acclimatized to some of the realities of TVET and have them come back here and do other things. Um, I probably was a little bit um, craven, if you want to use a Jamaican term. I got another one and I went to the United States and I did some studies there and do whatever needed to be done. I, mean, I, I had some commitment because these institutions want to employ me once I finish my program. They want to say, look, you want to stay. But anyway, I, I'm still here. Now, the last slide here is dealing with the way forward. And basically, I have here, you've heard it all, we need to get on board. I won't say much more here. TVET facilitates access to the world's economy. And if you are not taking this as a serious point, um, you're going to be in trouble. TVET is what gets you on the world economy as a nation, as a people, and we need to fix that. Um, we should not be relegated to the low-income job situation where some countries want some quick learning um, people to come and pick apples or do something like that. We need to look beyond that. We need to look at TVET for wealth creation rather than for poverty alleviation. So basically, that's my message to you. I have some uh, references here. It's not all my word. And um, you, know, you can take a look at those later on. And I have at least, you know, when you get this slide, you'll get these in there. I had to put down another slide because three at the end. But these are the TVET principles that I am promoting as the way forward. Thank you. Thank you.